The following program is part of Cable in the Classroom, a free service of the cable telecommunications industry and your local cable company. Hi, I'm Reese Davis. Welcome to ESPN's commercial-free presentation of Sports Figures. This is where science meets sports. First up today, New Jersey Nets power forward Kenyon Martin helps our Greg Abbey figure out how much energy an NBA crowd can produce. Bowen lobbed it up. Kid comes up with it and a running hand. Yeah, that's the playoffs. No, I'm not kidding. No, this place is crazy. Listen to this. The pass off. Martin, leader. team or what? Let's give it up. Come on. Get up. Yeah. Okay, I'm back. Sports fish. Put your brain in the game. How many totally insane screaming basketball fans does it take to run the Shut up! Thank you. How many totally insane screaming basketball fans does it take to light a light bulb? Okay. <sighs> now, this could sound like a leading to a joke, but it's not. In theory, a crowd at a basketball game could light a light bulb. But how is that possible? How could sound light up this bulb? I mean, don't you need electricity for that? Now, here's something that's going to totally blow your mind. Sound has energy. That's right, I'm not kidding. Sound has energy. Hey, you guys, I can't hear you! So what is sound? So here's a guy who's pretty familiar with the roar of the crowd. Kenyon Martin of the New Jersey Nets. Now, Kenyon graduated from the University of Cincinnati in the year 2000 with a degree in criminal justice. That year, he swept the College Player of the Year awards and was also the number one pick in the NBA draft by the New Jersey Nets. This is his third season in the NBA, and last year, he helped lead the Nets to the NBA Finals, leading the team in both blocks and points. And today, he's gonna help us take a look at how sound works. Well, first off, it's pretty hard to look at sound because you can't see it. That's true. Now, why is that? Sound travels in waves through the air. And just like you can't see the air, you can't see the sound waves in it. Well, that makes sense, but uh, where do these sound waves come from? I mean, how does it work? Okay, the first thing you need to know is the sound always starts with a vibration. Oh, I get that. That's, uh, that's sort of like when you get a vibe from someone, right? Uh, yeah. Oh. Uh, well, no, not really. Oh. A vibration is an object physically vibrating. If you look at a guitar string, it's pretty easy to see that it vibrates. Now that is where the sound is coming from. Me, 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 me. If you speak or sing, uh, you make sound. And if you put your fingers up against your throat, you can feel the vibrations. Those vibrations are coming from your vocal cords. See, your vocal cords are really a small muscle that your lungs push air through. The air makes the muscle vibrate, and that's what produces the sound. You control the sound you make by how much you allow the muscle to vibrate. Sound always starts out as a vibration. So uh, how does a vibration travel to your ear? Well, sound travels in waves, and not like waves at the beach. Sound travels in what we call a compression wave. It looks a little something like this. Step up! See, the sound energy is transmitted from one molecule to the next, and that compression ends up vibrating your ear, just like the ticket window vibrates. This is called a uh, longitudinal wave, or a compressional wave. Now, when a wave travels through a medium, like people on a line or the air, the disturbance travels through the medium. 
Now, if I were to vibrate this molecule here... What the heck? See, the molecules pass the disturbance along, but don't move closer the to the window themselves. The and the window vibrates just like your ear. You know, a compressional wave, it's the... Guess you're upset about that whole shouting thing. Sound travels faster than people shove it on a line. A lot faster. Watch this. Sound travels at 340 meters per second. That's almost 750 miles per hour. That means sound would travel down this 100-yard football field in about a third of a second. If Dave here throws some molecules at me, the molecules can't turn the corner to reach me. But if Dave throws some sound energy my way... Hey, Greg! Obviously, I can hear him because the sound energy can turn the corner. That's called diffraction. That's one of the reasons we know that sound travels through the air, but the air molecules themselves don't travel to my ear. Sound goes out in all directions at once. When you yell, a lot of your sound energy gets pushed out to the side or behind you. And that's why people will cup their hands to their mouth or use a megaphone. That cuts down on the diffraction and sends the sound energy in the place you want it. Thank you. The human ear is amazing. It can detect sounds as soft as a whisper or tolerate sounds that have a million, million times greater intensity. That's a lot of range. Now, there's a way to measure that range, to measure the loudness, and it's called the decibel scale. It's named after Alexander Graham Bell, the guy who invented the telephone. Dessa Bell. But you see, more commonly abbreviated DB. Now, DBs measure how loud something appears to our ear. Whoa. This meter here allows us to measure decibels. With it, we can compare all different types of loudness. The uh, decibel level here at the busy street is 78, or the rustle of leaves is 10 decibels. Now, the decibel scale uses zero as the point where the human ear can no longer detect sound and goes up from there to sounds that are 10,000 billion times stronger. Now, here's the strange thing about the decibel scale. If a sound is 10 decibels, it's 10 times as loud as 0 dB. Now, 20 dBs isn't twice as loud, it's 100 times as loud. The decibel scale is logarithmic, so the difference between 10 dBs and 20 dB is 10 times 10, 100. 30 dB is 10 times 10 times 10, or 1,000 times louder than 0. So my speaking voice, 60 dB, is a million times louder than the softest sound I could hear. It's pretty wild, right? You can hear everything from a leaf's rustle to a really loud band. Live music at a rock concert or a dance club can be as loud as 130 Whoa. dB, or 10,000 billion times is the softest sound you can hear. Now, your ears start to get damaged around 85 dB, depending on how loud the sound is and what type it is. Now, check this out. You wouldn't go to the beach and stare straight up into the sun, would you? Well, then why would you go to a rock concert and not wear earplugs? These little foam ear plugs can reduce the sound you hear by 20 dB and save your hearing. Bow, bow, chicka, bow. Here's another really important thing to remember about measuring in dBs. So if I had Mary here yell, Woo! 85 decibels. Now, what if I had two people do the cheer at the same time? It would be twice as loud. Well, how many dBs would that be? 170. Well, let's try it. 88 decibels. You see, that's the weird thing about the decibel scale. Each time you double the loudness, it only increases the decibels by three. So what if I wanted to double the sound again? We'd have to have four people yell. All right, let's try that. Woo! 91 decibels. So I'd have to double the people yelling each time to increase the decibels by three. So eight people yelling would be 94 decibels? Right. Now, to figure out what that means in a packed arena, Let's go to ESPN commentator and Hall of Famer Bill Walton and the Sports Figures Blackboard. An NBA game can get pretty darn loud, especially during the playoffs and championship games. The Sacramento Kings Arco Arena clocks in at the loudest, a whopping 112 decibels, with one reading behind the visitor's bench reaching 126 dBs. It's going to take a lot of fans to get sound levels up that high. Using the numbers, we can come pretty close to figuring out the attendance at Arco Arena that night. 
Greg just measured one person yelling at 85 decibels. For every increase of 3 dBs, we need to double the number of fans yelling. At first, it doesn't seem like we'd ever reach a big arena-sized crowd. 100 dBs only takes about 32 fans. But doubling the loudness starts to add up very quickly. From 115 decibels to 118 dBs takes 1,024 fans. Finally, we can see that it would take in the neighborhood of 16,384 fans to create 126 decibels. It takes a lot of fans to come out to the arena to do that. So love it live. I'm Bill Walton at the Sports Figures Blackboard. So, uh, Kenyon, you obviously work out a lot, but for like a high school kid coming up, wanting to play in the NBA, what are some of the things he should do physically to like, get himself, his body prepared for the games? Eat right to start off, you know, get plenty of rest, you know, the night before the game or the, night, or the day of the game. Rest and nutrition. Nutrition is as, as important. Yeah, you don't want to fill your body with junk. You know, you want to get the best output you can. Right. So you need to put whatever you put in, you know, that's how you're going to play, I think. Well, obviously, because you, you, you're power forward, right? Yeah. So you play against the big guys. So what's more important, strength or quickness? Is it both or? Um, I have both, you know, so I think what I have is the best. <laughs> Now look at this. We were just reading they're yelling at 91 dB, but now it's down to uh, 63. That's because sound energy dissipates over distance. The further you get away from the sound source, the less loud it is and uh, less energy it has. Okay, well, we all know sound is loud, and that's what dBs measure, but what about energy? Does, uh, does sound actually have energy? Well, first, have to remember the definition of energy. Okay, uh, if something has energy, it can do work. Well, work is a force over a distance. So ask yourself, can sound exert a force over a distance? Can sound exert... It, you remember how the ticket window was like your ear, and the first person online vibrated the window? What the heck is going on up there? Let's open up the window! Well, because the window moved, we know it was force over a distance. Here's how your ear works. Your eardrum is a delicate membrane, kind of like a drum. When a sound wave enters your ear, it pushes against the membrane. The membrane moves, and because it moves, we know that a force was applied over the distance that your eardrum moved. The sound did work on your eardrum. Decibels measure loudness. Now, to measure sound's intensity, we use a kind of strange unit of measurement. Watts per square meter. That's the power across the area of one square meter. So right now, my speaking voice has about 60 dB. So the intensity would be 10 to negative 6 watts per square meter. Now, watts measure electrical power, right? So the energy from my voice collected over one square meter would be the equivalent to 0 0.000001 watt. Now, that's not nearly enough to light this 20-watt light bulb. You can make your sound collector as big as you want it, like 100 square meters, and that would multiply every watt you collected by 100. But we're going to use a collector that's one meter by one meter, one square meter. Kenyon, uh, how are we going to figure this out? I mean, could a, could a totally insane basketball crowd uh, light up a 20-watt light bulb? Well, you could take the sound energy one fan produces at the game and figure it out using the number of people at the game. Okay. All right, let's try it. Let's go. Let's go. So how much sound can a fan produce? Yelling at the top of your lungs, 90 dB. Clapping and stomping your feet, another 90 dB. Remember, we can't just add up the decibels. Clapping and stomping basically doubles the sound a fan can make and only increases the dBs by three. So the total sound output of one fan is 93 dB, which has an intensity of approximately 10 to negative three watts per square meter. This guy's wattage is 0 .001 watt. Not the brightest bulb on the tree. That's only one one thousandth of a watt. Now here's the thing. One fan is a single point source of sound. And in a big arena, you might have 20,000 fans. So that would be 20,000 point sources. All these point sources are varying distances from the court. Remember we said that sound energy dissipates with distance? But to simplify things, let's assume that we have a perfectly efficient system, and that we'll be able to gather the full one one-thousandths of a watt per square meter from each fan. At that rate, it would take 1,000 fans to produce one watt, 10,000 fans to produce 10 watts, and 20,000 fans to produce 20 watts. It works!
It works. Let them be light. Of course, it would take every single fan to continuously cheer, stomp, and yell to keep the bulb lit. Come on, what's wrong with you guys? You're tired? Come on! That's better. Can you ever physically feel it, like as the crowd starts to erupt and gets together? It gives me chills. Does it? Yeah, I like it. Though. it gets you pumped up? It's a good chill. So thing. you start like throwing it down yeah, then and, and blocking, blocking shots? Blocking shots, screaming, yelling. Okay, so what did we learn? The sound is caused by vibrations, and they travel through a medium like air. The vibrations travel in longitudinal waves, and they're also called compression waves. And we know sound has energy because it can do work, like vibrating in your ear. That the loudness of sound is measured in decibels. And decibels go up logarithmically. Each unit of 10 is 10 times louder. Or if you double the loudness, the decibels increase by 3 dB. Sound intensity is measured in watts per meter squared, and that allows you to find energy. Whew! That took a lot of energy. So that's it. I'd like to thank Kenyon Martin and our students, Dave, Evan, Mary, Stacy, and Brooke, for helping us out today on ESPN Sports Figures, cheering energy. Hey. Hey, who turned the lights out? Hey! ESPN is proud of the many awards that Sports Figures has received, and we want to thank all the great athletes who have donated their time to help you put your brain in the game. ESPN Sports Figures is presented commercial free for educators to tape and use in the classroom. For a free teacher's curriculum, to order the Sports Figures series, or if you have questions or comments, visit our website at ESPNSportsFigures.com. You can also call 1-800-565-0452. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Sports, sports Figures, put, put your, your brain, brain in the, in the game. game. The preceding program is part of Cable in the Classroom, a free service of the cable telecommunications industry and your local cable company.